Brooke Mason. I work at the Reef in Biloxi. I uh, have been the bar manager for about six and a half years, and I do all the entertainment booking for everyone's pleasure. Well, um, first of all, Spring Fling was a huge success, and um, I think that that brought in a uh, new uh a new way of doing some entertainment upstairs because not only did we have all the local artists come perform but we also had local artists uh as far as like um media you know um paintings and um arts and crafts so that was pretty cool a uh, huge success the staff loved it um and i think that we got a a good response there was a lot of people who came and they were able to enjoy uh, the Sky Bar, and they had never gone to uh, to uh, watch a show there. So that brought a lot of exposure to the venue. And then, in turn, I was able to bring new artists in to perform. 
like Zachary Perkins, he he is a regular up there, and thanks to Spring Fling, I would have never never known about Zach. So I I think that's successful. So now um, we're doing the Friendsgiving, which I've been doing for the last six years, and it's pretty much a a get together. We uh, do music the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, we take donations, pet donations for the shelters around the coast. Um, this year, I wanted to involve y'all because of the success of Spring Fling and what you're doing um, around the coast. And I thought that maybe uh, joining forces, we could bring a little more exposure to Friendsgiving and make it a, a, a little bigger, you know, um, because giving back to the community is a big, a big thing that we want to do at the reef. But, um, you know, pets... They hold a special place in my heart. So um, so that's why it's important um, to get the word out and get some help, you know, for the shelters. In the past, we've never charged a cover and it's pretty much been donation only. Um, this year, I thought that um, maybe enticing people to bring donations, we would do a cover at the door, it'd be a $10 cover. Um, if you bring a donation, then we were gonna do a $5 cover with a donation. So. Regardless, 100% of the proceeds go to the shelters. And um, so I think that a lot of times when people are coming and they and they want to help out and it kind of slips their mind about, oh, we should have brought, you know, some pet food or, or supplies and they don't think about it and they come in and, they, and they're there and they're supporting the music and, you know, the venue by being there. But it kind of gets lost what the purpose was and that is to help the shelters out. So this year, that's why we want to do 100% of the proceeds going to the shelters and make sure that they they have a happy little Thanksgiving. Well, I mean, over the years, uh, we've seen a lot of um, a lot of talent come into the Sky Bar. Um, so we, we, in the summertime, we have music pretty much every, every day of the week. Um, but we would do DJs on on Fridays. We would do bands on Saturdays. We would do duos on Sundays. Um, so we're trying to incorporate a lot more local original artists coming in. So we love our cover bands. The the people that are out of state they come over and they check out cover bands and you know it's it's uh it gets people dancing and singing. Um, but we also want to move in a direction where we're showcasing individuality up there so that's why we kind of started changing our fridays from djs to solo and duo acts we still keep the bands on saturdays and then after football season we go back to the solo duo acts on sundays thursdays and uh, i think that just truly staying local is is one of our goals now of course, we feature artists from Louisiana, Alabama, Florida. We have a lot of people that reach out to us to play at the venue. And that's where we're kind of moving towards in the new year is bringing even more new acts to the coast. It's a song about my guitar. This is Miss Martinez. This is Martin with Ibanez headstock. I broke the headstock off of in Nashville. And JB welded it back home there. Well, that goes a little something like this. Give me your ears, I got a song to play. I got something to say. When it comes down to it, that's about all I got. At the end of the day, hey, hey, baby, now that's okay. I got everything I need. Place to sleep. Oh. No. 
Catfish Peacock. My mama didn't know me naming Catfish. My mama named me Joshua, but everybody calls me Catfish. Uh, I've been playing music for probably about 21 years, and I really got started playing music because I realized at a young age that I really didn't want to do anything else that everybody was trying to tell me to do. And it just seemed like the the logical progression in life to pick up a guitar and start writing songs and travel around and being a, a rambling man, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, and I I just recorded an album up in uh in North Georgia in Tucker, Georgia, with a, a fellow named Chris Ricker. Everybody calls him Critter Ricker, and uh, he he produced it and engineered it, and uh, Devin Harris. Played bass and played uh, lead guitar on it. And there's a, uh, I hadn't really put it online yet. Cause my last album I had online on 150 websites in 50 countries for like three years, and I made five dollars off of it. And I mean, I definitely want people to hear my music, but I don't want to just give away everything I love in order for people to hear it. I guess I don't know. And I'm kind of trying to figure out the best way to distribute it. I guess eventually I had to put it on Spotify, at least Spotify, even though they pay pennies on the dollar. Point zero 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 one. All right, it might be more zeros than that. Spotify. Anytime you feel like giving me that money, you and me, I'll be okay with it. Recently, I've kind of like gotten to where I'll make myself right sometimes but most of the time the good ones just come to me and it's just, i'm doing good at this write them down i feel like and i've heard other songwriters that that i've like looked up to over the years said the same thing now, i don't know what it is it's just like it just comes from somewhere you know but like i said i have gotten good at like actually sitting down and making myself write a song whether that just coming to me and me writing it down but i don't i don't really know I feel like it's uh, something good out there in the universe that it sends to people that uh, are willing to receive it and turn it into something usable, I guess. I don't, I don't really know how it works. I'm glad that it does work, though. I really like, uh, I really like private parties. It's most of the time they got the most money and free alcohol and whatever else you might want out of a, a gig you know but i also like to play i also like to play restaurants and being like background music and nobody paying attention to me too for a long time i hated that that for the longest time i really hated that and it really got under my skin like pouring my heart out for three hours and then like nobody clapping but after playing so many of those gigs like i'd get done playing like and nobody would clap but everybody in the place would come up to me and talk to me like afterwards. Uh, when I walked in there, everybody avoided me like the plague. But 
and nobody clapped the whole time I was playing. But afterwards, like every single person would come up and just be like, "Man, that was awesome! I really enjoyed that. Thank you for coming." Um, my name is Kenny Paul Mann. I'm from Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, I work at the Porter Brew Pub in downtown Hattiesburg. I brew beer there. Uh, for five years, I own Slobo Brewing Company in Laurel, Mississippi. We recently shut that down uh, at the start of the pandemic last year. So uh, I'm really happy where I'm at now. Uh, you told me to put on my my brewing hat, but I, I really think that the brewing and music is 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 a marriage for me. Yeah, uh, like shortly after, uh, shortly after home brewing was legalized, uh, I really, really got into it. Uh, I did brew a little bit when it was was not legal. I mean, most everybody did. Uh, such a silly, archaic law. But uh, with home brewing, I, I, I went and watched somebody home brew once, and I just really kind of fell in love with the science of it. Uh, not that I know. A lot of the technical science, I haven't, I know enough to, to be dangerous, to, to mess something up, but uh, it's just really the experimenting and, and seeing uh, how, like, you know, uh, just one degree of temperature uh, can, can affect the taste of something so much, or, or, or a different uh, hop, a different flower can bring such a different flavor or aroma even to, to, to something that's, you're working also with yeast, you're working with a living thing that kind of just does what it wants to do. You can create this environment for it to, to flourish and create alcohol for you, but it, it kind of does what it wants to do. So that, that really excited me a whole lot. I started, uh, I started brewing in probably early 2014, I would say, uh, brewing out of my basement. I was working offshore at the time. I would brew a couple batches and I had a, like a, a deep freezer I converted into a, a fermentation chamber kind of thing down there. So I put my beer in there, let it ferment, I'd go to offshore for two weeks, I'd come home and I'd have beer ready to go. And we would have events and share beer with people and everything and it was a, a lot of fun. I did that for a long time. My wife and I really kind of started exploring opportunities with opening a bar in town. And uh, I just knew that if I didn't incorporate that brewing into it in some way that I'd always regret it. So we somehow wound up stumbling into opening an actual production brewery uh, in a state that is extremely difficult to operate a small production brewery in. The, the laws are still to this day uh, that, you know, they've gotten a lot better, but in a lot of ways they've gotten worse for, for small operations, uh, for, for people that are doing it by their bootstraps and don't have a, a ton of money to back up to where if you lose a batch of beer you can't pay your light bill for the month. I mean, it's, so it's, uh, that ex excited me as well. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun, a lot of experimenting. Uh, I kind of brew what I like to drink personally. I don't really worry about the trends or any of that stuff. Uh, I try to keep a wide variety of stuff on tap. Uh, and it's, it's a real passion of mine. So I, I like most styles of beer. There's, I, I don't really lean too heavy on the wheat stuff. Although wheat-based beer is one of my more popular and well-received beers. Uh, I really like stouts a lot. I like IPAs. I like sours. I like fruited stuff. Uh, I love it all. I like to experiment with it. I like to try new things. Uh, in my time with Slow Boat, I brewed two separate beers and brewed them, repeatedly brewed them on multiple occasions. I brewed one with uh, Chanterelle Mushrooms. And a second one I brewed with uh, blue oyster mus mushrooms. And that was, you know, kind of cool to do something different. Uh, probably the, the beer that has done the best for me uh, was made with hibiscus. And that's also a, a little different. It, it gives a much different flavor than you expect to have from a beer. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. But, you know, my goal is to get someone to come up to me and say, I do not like beer but I like this beer. And uh, as long as I like it, uh, that, that's the goal, you know. If I like it and it can change people's minds about beer, let, let them try something different that's not your your trendy, like, you know, quadruple dry hopped, whatever, you know, whatever's trending at the time. I just want people to in, just enjoy drinking a beer. Yeah, uh, with the Porter, we, we do a lot of, uh, first off, I'll start out by saying that when I did have Slow Boat open, the Porter was 
absolutely one of our best accounts. They were really great to us. We had a good working relationship with the owner for for years, and uh, it just so happened to work out great that his brewer left around the time I closed my brewery, and uh, he invited me to step in and brew there. And I, I was trying to play music full time at the time, and I was doing that, but I just I really couldn't pass up on the opportunity to 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 pick that up again and really see where I could take it. Uh, and it's and it's been really great. Uh, there's a lot of freedom. He kind of lets me do what I want to do, and uh, it's been well received. We do a lot of events. Uh, we do quarterly beer dinners and uh, at least two releases every month. And uh, there's just constant stuff going on. Live music all the time. I love to pair beer releases or themed beers with different music. Uh, but yeah, you can you can check that out. The the Porter, Porter Public House in downtown Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Southbound Greyhound, I'm headed back home. Music City might have broke my baby, but the bitch left me alone. Well, I hate to leave Tennessee, but I got to ramble on and on and on. Well, I can't help it when the Lord made me, He made a rolling stone. Talking road, long time no see. Talking road, rock me to sleep. Talking road, won't you sing me a song? Talking road, won't you take me home?
believe I'm wearing this. I love it. Okay. And I haven't heard y'all. Like me. <laughs> I got a video for them too. So, um, Somebody doesn't watch our show. I do try to watch as soon as I see it. I support y'all, damn it. I can't believe that. You don't ever see? But I need you to understand. I'm a big supporter of y'all. What's your name again? What's your name? I, I am a cult classic fan. You know, come support, come support me. You know, come, come support this. Support all of this. I need support. Hashtag support. <laughs>